All right. Hi, uh, my name is Mark Lozano Schaff. Um, I'm a, a fourth year mechanical engineering uh, student at WSU. Uh, I'm the ME team lead for uh, Palouse RoboSub. Um, during my time as part of the team, I've overseen the design process of the uh, Swarm Bot, as you can see here. Uh, and more specifically, I'll be uh, talking about the whole design. Um, so our whole design requirements for the Swarm Bot were that it needed to be at least 84 pounds in dry, in dry air weight and fit within a six foot by three foot wide height box um, for our uh, for our swarm bot in total, it was around like 15 inches by 12 inches by 13 inches. So went well within that uh, range. Uh, and it's simulated, it's simulated at least to be approximately 15, 15 pounds. Um, that's not including the electronics bay, but that doesn't, we're not anticipating that'll add too much weight to it. Um, this is also the location, this top portion here. Um, also the location of the kill switch and the sling system. Um, this is where it will be uh, as, is, as per requirements. And uh, is also required to be positively buoyant to at least 0.5%. Um, however, we were uh, unable to test this in our design due to uh, testing constraints due to uh, COVID. Um, so moving on to our competition strategy. Uh, the primary purpose of this swarm bot is to have the flexibility to assign any single task um, to, to it uh, via, you know, modular units. So the way that's done basically is uh, utilizing this T slot framing as a uh, as a mounting kind of framework that we can mount uh, um, units onto, and by units I mean uh, any type of subsystem that can be used to accomplish a task. So, for example, we would utilize for this form by particular for this competition we would have utilized it utilized it to um, accomplish the collecting task where, where we need to use an arm mechanism to lift off the cover and and uh, and drop um, and drop those pieces in. Uh, we would do that by by attaching a T slot mountable grabber arm mechanism to the whole of the swarm bot. Uh, we would probably do that you know this doesn't we would probably do that somewhere Right here, or in the or in the other side, uh, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, if the weight would become probably, we just counterbalance it. But uh, with a decrease of total whole complexity, um, we're very confident that it can it can, it can complete one of its tasks. Um, especially because uh, the swarm bot itself has dual vision, uh, its own array of um propulsion components um but yeah uh in terms of development testing of our system uh, for this year of covid we of covid we used we utilized a lot of zoom meetings with our team members uh, many hours to create just 3d models and detailed assemblies for uh for this for the swarm bot um this is this is one of them, but uh, we haven't. We wanted to keep the total assemblies down to kind of sub assemblies, so we don't bog down our systems. Um, and we, because we, because of course we couldn't test and develop a lot of this in person um, due to our team members being spread out all across the state. We took we paid a special attention to the materials chosen for each component and ensured that at least when possible, we, we include the ad number or, or other relevant inventory identification number for whatever vendor we got it from. Um, so yeah, so for, for the components within our assemblies, so that when needed later, later on, we can create more accurate 3D views and simulations um, and not have to rely on 
for example, using uh, this uh, using SolidWorks toolbox um, and that up and that not being upgraded later in the future and potentially causing problems when we uh, update the file to different versions. Um, but yeah, thanks.